In this work, we study how signals traverse the cerebral cortex. We think of the cortex of the human brain as comprising multiple discrete regions that each play a role in processing information and enabling us to make decisions. In service of this functional goal, these cortical regions are thought to be organized according to a hierarchy that is defined by gradual changes to their profiles of cytoarchitecture. This hierarchy forms what we call the sensory fugal axis, and this axis is thought to shape the structural connectivity between brain regions. We also think that this axis shapes and constrains the propagation and integration of neuronal signals across the cortex. Within this hierarchy, signals from our environment arrive first at sensory cortices. They are then propagated up to modality-specific systems before they finally arrive at association and paralimbic regions responsible for functional integration. Signals traverse down this hierarchy as well, and this interplay between bottom-up and top-down signaling is thought to underpin our capacity to make predictions about our environment, as well as to complete goal-directed action. As mentioned earlier, this hierarchy is thought to govern the complex pattern of structural connections that course throughout the brain. So in this work, we sought to examine whether cytoarchitecture explained differences in how signals propagate up and down this hierarchy when traveling along those structural connections. To achieve this, we utilize a model of signal propagation in the brain that relies on a network representation. In this network, cortical regions are represented as nodes, and the structural connections between those nodes are represented as edges. Within this network representation, we can think of the brain's activity as moving through a series of states over time, where a state is simply a specific pattern of activity at each node. All of the possible brain states within this networked system can be represented as a manifold in an n-dimensional space. For simplicity, here we represent this state space in three dimensions only. In this context, a specific brain state is a point on this manifold. For example, the brain state we're showing currently might fall here on our manifold. As such, by moving through different points on our state space manifold, we sample different activity patterns for our network. Additionally, using a framework called network control theory, we can sample a pair of points from this manifold and ask whether we can control the brain to transition between the associated states. We do this by modeling the control inputs that need to be delivered to the nodes of the network to drive the brain through the state space from an initial to a target state. We then summarize this information into a single metric we call energy. This energy simply quantifies the amount of effort the model had to go to in order to complete that state transition. Here, we use this approach to estimate the energy associated with state transitions that move up and down the cortical hierarchy of cytoarchitecture and then we examine whether energy differs between those bottom-up and top-down state transitions. For example, assuming that our blue brain state is low on the hierarchy and our yellow brain state is high on the hierarchy, we can estimate the energy associated with transitioning between these states in both directions, one running bottom-up from blue to yellow and the other running top-down from yellow back to blue. Then, we subtract these energy estimates to examine whether there is an asymmetry between bottom-up and top-down state transitions. When we applied this approach to many state transitions sampled from our manifold, we found that bottom-up state transitions had lower energy compared to their top-down counterparts. This result indicates that bottom-up state transitions were easier for our model to complete. Furthermore, we observed that as the distance separating brain states along the hierarchy grew larger, the energy asymmetries became more negative. This indicates that bottom-up transitions had lower energy with greater distance between brain states along the hierarchy. This tells us that not only were bottom-up state transitions easier to complete compared to top-down, but also that these asymmetries were largest when brain states' profiles of cytoarchitecture were maximally different. We also found that as these energy asymmetries became more negative, the intrinsic neuronal timescales of the target state became longer relative to the initial state. This finding tells us that bottom-up transitions that are relatively easy to complete are coincident with a lengthening of the temporal receptive windows of the target brain states. Lastly, 
when examining developmental effects, we found that both bottom-up and top-down energy reduced throughout youth. However, we observed a stronger effect for top-down here, indicating that the size of the asymmetry may actually be converging towards zero in our sample. In turn, this tells us that during development, the connectome may actually be refining towards a balance between bottom-up and top-down signal propagation. Collectively, these results tell us that the topology of the structural connectome may be wired to enable efficient bottom-up signal propagation across the cortical hierarchy of cytoarchitecture, and that this characteristic of the connectome links to changes in intrinsic neuronal timescales across the hierarchy and varies systematically throughout youth. If you'd like to learn some more, please check our manuscript by following the QR code.